it doesn't work on this one, so you have to do it the old fashioned way with the key. It doesn't work. Oh. Seriously? Something strange is happening in England. A uh, lovely grey sky has gone a weird shade of blue. There's a great big fireball in the sky. Now I've heard this happens in other countries. Strange. What a fantastic day for filming though. Look at that. I'm not gonna get rained on. Looks lovely. So here's the thing, I always seem to be wrestling internally. Cars fulfill different needs. For everyone they're a tool to get around in, I get that. But for some they're only a tool and that's really sad because the rest of us know cars can be a thing of real beauty, cutting edge design, or classic art, they can stir emotions in people just by sight. They can trigger excitement and adrenaline and dedication in others, and they encompass incredible engineering from every decade of their existence. Most of all, cars can be great fun. Just a good old boy, never meaning no harm. Like everyone, I love supercars, although I can't afford one. And I love cool cars, including the retro stuff. And all these cost money, but it's a passion. Some are good, some are bad, but at least there's pleasure or emotion in return. I'm also a big fan of Banganomics. I get really excited about how cheaply you can find a car and run it and cover the same distances as everyone else for a fraction of the cost. F off wind. This video is probably a bit of both. Or neither. Let's see. Not long ago I did a video about whether you can buy and run an Audi R8 for free. If you haven't seen it, please do give it a watch. This video is in a similar vein, except this time it's my money, which is more precious because there's less of it and it's mine. So around five months ago, I thought I'd try something different. Could I buy something super flash that could be used as a daily driver to potter about in without costing the earth? Or hopefully no more than a normal car would cost over the time I own it. So I looked at what I could get for the 15,000 pound mark for no other reason than I can get a loan for this and it makes the payments about 260 pounds a month, which means I can compare that cost with cars of similar value or even lease cars. Also, I didn't want to think it was going to depreciate like a stone so newer cars are out. I didn't want to think too temperamental it was going to require shed loads of maintenance. So I decided on a Bentley Continental GT Molina spec I think, I hope, at least I hope it's a Molina spec. So how much did it cost? So I paid £14,750 for this 2004 Bentley Continental GT, maybe Molina. I'm sure, I'm sure it's a Molina. It's a Molina. Molina spec. It's done 94,000 miles with full service history with some Bentley garages, some specialist garages and some garages. Sweating it so hot. It's got a few annoying little things that need to be put right on it, but in general, there's not a huge amount wrong with it. All the basic major mechanical stuff is fine. Sweating in England, I can't believe it. Now I know I should be getting excited at this point because it's in a league way above the stuff I normally drive or own. Bentley! <laughs> Whoa! Bentley! Ben Whoa! Bentley! Whoa! You know it! Yeah. Bentley! But I just can't. For some reason, I just can't connect with this car. I've just. It just doesn't do it for me. Now, I don't know if I'm just not on the same wavelength as all the other people that review these cars, or whether it's just different because I've bought my own, but I just don't see it. This is gonna go pretty much against every review I've seen of these cars, and probably make some people mad, but it's my honest opinion. So, why did I buy it? Well, I'll tell you. Brand new, this car cost in excess of 120,000 pounds. So after a massive 88% depreciation, this car must have bottomed out at 12% of its original value. How much lower can it go? How much more can it lose? I am definitely up for trying out a little bit of depreciation proof motoring. Now I get that you won't get much else this fast for this kind of money. You're talking about 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds and just shy of 200 miles an hour flat out. All for less than 15,000 pounds. That's the same price as a say at people carrier. And I've got no idea why, but the insurance is really reasonable. I insured it at 44 years old with no no claims bonus because it's tied up on other snot boxes for less than 400 pounds for a whole year. Also, we all know that Bentley's owned by Volkswagen Audi Group, which means hopefully it'll be reliable, and there'll also be some interchangeable VAG parts. And you'd like to think it'll be built to typical German standards. Inside, it all feels quite British, really. Well, it's supposedly British, because that's what you're supposed to think, because of the leather everywhere. But to me, there's just way too much Volkswagen Audi stuff in here for it to come across as British. Me, the fourth Duke of Wessexshire, driving a Bentley, Alone, with my reputation. But historically, pre vag Bentleys don't have a great reputation for reliability. Luckily, under here, it's all German. Close the door whilst I'm busy sucking and squeezing and banging and blowing. 
Six litre W12 from Volkswagen Audi, as found in the Audi A8 and the Volkswagen Phaeton, except they've slapped two big fat turbochargers on. So this now pushes out 556 horsepower and lots of torques, man! But something really confuses me about these cars. And I was guilty of it a few seconds ago. When anybody reviews Bentleys, especially older used Bentleys, they always seem to make out that it's the epitome of high society. I can't remember the last review I saw where the hosting oik, like me, wasn't putting on some kind of fake upper class accent. I, I just don't get it. Where, where did they get this reputation from? I don't know any posh elite types who drive Bentleys. You never see them on TV. You never see them anywhere. They always drive Land Rovers and Range Rovers and things. The people who drive these things are more likely to be northern carpet warehouse owners or footballists. In fact, I believe the previous owner of this one was some kind of burger alarm installer from Manchester. So anyway, I better talk you around this one. Now it's the Mulliner spec, so you get these wheels, you get quilted leather, as opposed to standard leather. I won't go through all the spec because most of it's standard on most cars now. And it does feel a little bit Audi. The dials are from a Volkswagen Touareg. Trip computer's Audi as well. Audi gearbox surround, Audi armrests, and underneath, Volkswagen suspension straight out of a Volkswagen Phaeton. Even the keys, which are £400 each to replace, have Audi skeletons. But what you do get is a Breitling clock. I don't know why that's special, but it looks very funky when you set it, which you have to do every time the battery goes flat, which is very often if you don't drive it much. Now, Bentley must have known the battery was going to go flat all the time on the Continental when they made it. They give you a second spare battery in the boot. When this one is inevitably flat, you've got a spare over here, which I have to admit does come in handy. You come out to your car, damn it, battery's flat again. But instead of calling the recovery services or reaching for the drum leads, nothing's happening. Turn the key the opposite way and then back the other way. And it starts with lots of warning lights. Now I bought this car from a Bentley dealer up north where it had been part exchange in and I bought it as a kind of trade sale, which means I got it a bit cheaper, but there's no recourse or comeback. So as I've been driving around, I've started to notice some of these issues. Here goes, uh, headlining's starting to sag. The start button doesn't work, but the car starts fine with the key. The armrest won't go down. Uh, sat nav isn't working properly. Uh, Aircon isn't cold. There's a creaking noise on full steering lock. Parking sensors don't work. And as usual on older Continentals, the rear speed activated spoiler doesn't work. The rumor has it the Bentley badge is a touch sensitive badge to open the boot with, but it doesn't work on this one. So you have to do it the old fashioned way with the key. Doesn't work. Oh. Seriously? Okay, I'll add that to the list as well then. So the boot mechanism doesn't work, but oddly enough, it's been supplied with what looks like another boot mechanism uh, in a Bentley box. I don't know why it hasn't been fitted. Maybe it's too expensive to fit, or maybe somebody couldn't be bothered, or maybe it isn't even the solution to the problem. On the road, I have to say, this car's... On the road, I have to say, this car's... And just as I started filming this car out today, shock absorber fault visit workshop sign came on the dash. On the road, it's actually pretty good. It's got four wheel drive for all that power, which is relentless by the way. It just keeps pulling and pulling. It just never seems to run out of power. Seats are amazingly comfortable. Best I've ever known in a car. And they come with a massage function. But again, I'm not really impressed. It doesn't seem to massage you. It's just like someone rolling a rolling pin up and down the bottom of your back. It's a bit odd. And there's no happy ending button. On a 120 grand car? Stupid Bentley. And then of course, it's the way the car makes you feel. And the Continental makes you feel like a bit of a git. You always think people are looking at you like you're some kind of fourth division footballer, or a guy whose double glazing business is doing really well. Not that you're classy or high class or upper class or that you've made it. It's, it's not really a car you drive around to show off in. It's just a little bit ostentatious and a little bit embarrassing to be seen in. It's not cool. So what it feels like in summary is I imagine what it's like to date the ex-wife of a footballer. We know she's going to be expensive to run and the footballer's bills are about to become my bills. But at the moment she just needs a bit of Botox doing and her hair doing. Her plastic surgery is up to date for now and she's just been clothes shopping. So there's not much to spend right now, but you get this feeling that there are some big bills coming. You just don't know when. I'm going to go over here so it can't hear me. But I live in fear of a ticking time bomb. When's my Bentley going to bang its tennis coach and take all my money? And follow through. Perfect. So that brings us to the end of another video. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe. It is free and it really does help. And click the notification bell so that you don't miss the next video, which will be me trying to put a few of these things right without breaking the bank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.